Hey everybody, welcome to the first video in the algorithms series and there's just a few videos here but in my mind this is actually probably one of the most important set of videos and you can understand the, these videos even if you have no programming experience whatsoever. So if you're watching this as the first video in this series, you're not going to have any problem following along. If you're watching it after you've done all the programming, then hopefully it'll kind of make you think about what you're doing when you're actually programming. So what is an algorithm and what is it used for in computer science? Well, an algorithm is really just a way of solving a problem. Okay? And when a computer scientist goes to work, uh, oftentimes they're solving problems. In fact, that's most of what their job is, is just finding a way to solve a problem. And most jobs are problem solving of some sort, but most jobs don't take that problem, find a solution, and then write that solution down in a very, very specific way, which in computer science and programming is using code, whether it's Python or Java or C++ or any other programming language, they're gonna write some sort of, some sort of code down, okay? so. In a more general sense though, an algorithm is really just going to be what we would call, I don't know, let's say a process or set of rules that allows you to solve a problem or create a product. Okay, and by product I don't mean necessarily something you buy at the store. I just mean any sort of physical or digital outcome. Okay, so uh, that doesn't mean if you create something you're using an algorithm, but if you do create something you may have used an algorithm to get to that point. And I'm going to talk about why that would be here in just a second. So as an example, something that uh, many people might not recognize as an algorithm is something a lot of them do when they go into the kitchen, and that is a recipe. So a recipe is an algorithm because it uses a set of rules and that allows you to create a product. You create some cake or cookies or pretty much anything that you are making, there's a recipe that goes behind it. And there's a specific set of rules that gets you to that point. So it's an algorithm. Uh, another one that might be something like, uh, I don't know, directions. Okay, so directions and by directions I mean like how you get from point A to point B. Uh, so directions are an algorithm. Go left, go right, go straight for five kilometers, do this. If I wanted to get you to a specific location, I could, I have, you have to follow a particular algorithm in order to get there. If you don't follow those directions, you don't end up where I asked you to. Now, that doesn't mean there couldn't be another algorithm that would get you there. So maybe you find another algorithm if you go a different way but each way would be require a different algorithm in order to get there because it's a set of rules that allows you to solve a problem. And the problem in this case is how do I get from where I am to where I want to go? Okay. Uh, another one, and this is probably the most, let me back that up, probably the most apt in our case is instructions. Okay, so instructions, like if you've ever played with Legos when you were a kid, uh, with Legos, you open up the box, and there's a whole bunch of pieces, and then there's a nice colorful instruction manual that tells you how to make that picture on the box. So if you're anything like me, I would usually open it up, look at that pretty instruction manual, and say, man, it'd be really nice to make that. I throw that away, and then I just build whatever I want, uh, usually because I wanted the pieces. While my sister, who also played with Legos, she would open it up, and she would very carefully build the thing on the box and then she would put it somewhere and play with it or whatever and then eventually she might take it apart and build something or I would take it apart and build something but for the most part she liked building the thing and then just looking at it or playing with it so it's kind of a different thing 
different mindset nowadays. But these three things are just some examples of what an algorithm is. So lots of other things can be considered an algorithm. Now, there is one algorithm that I want to talk about today, and it is something that a lot of you should know how to do. Or maybe, I mean, now you've probably got to the point where you do it, but you don't even think about that you're actually doing an algorithm. And to give you an example here, that is going to be, let me just take a, let me make up something here. 3 uh, times 2 squared plus 4. Four and then let's divide that by by four. Okay, so this here uh, is just an expression, and I want you to solve it. So most of you, some of you, probably already solved it by now. Uh, but there is an algorithm that goes along with this, and this algorithm, if you've come from uh, an English-speaking country, you might have learned this. PEMDAS. If you didn't come from an English speaking country, you might have a different way of doing this. So this is, whoops, why am I writing PEMDAS there? Uh, this is parens or parentheses. Uh, this is your exponents. This is multiply. Ah. This is obviously now divide. Ah, uh, add, and pen is getting away from me here, subtract. Okay, so we've got uh, add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Mm -hmm. Get that rid of that there. Okay, so why is this an algorithm? Well, this is the set of rules over here, and this set of rules is going to help us solve this problem over here. So I want to solve this problem. I need to follow these steps. If I don't follow those steps, I won't actually end up with the correct answer. I'll end up with a number that is not the right answer. So this is a pretty simple example. We'll go ahead and follow it. So first do the parens. So I look here at the outside parens. Then I go inside of it. And then I see another set of parens. And I need to do everything in there first. So if I were to do this, the first thing I would end up with is something like this. Okay, and then following these instructions, following this algorithm again, I will go inside the parentheses again. And now this one, these parentheses don't really matter. Uh, so I'm left with 36 because after parens, next thing is exponents. Now there's still some parens here, some parentheses. So I do go in there again, and this time I'm left with 40 divided by 4 is equal to 10. Okay, and so... If I were writing a program to solve this problem here, I would program in these steps. So I, I would tell the programs, like, first you need to go into the innermost parentheses, and everything inside there, I want you to do exponents, multiply, divide, add, subtract. Remember, multiply and divide are done same time, going left to right, but not really too important uh, at this point. Uh, we're not teaching, I'm not teaching you math, I'm teaching you what a computer would do here. So the computer would go through these steps and encode it somehow. So when you do anything in a programming language and you put in something like this, it uses these steps inside in order to solve it. It uses the order of operations. And if you remember, this is just your order of operations. You probably learned this when you were very young and it's been so drilled into your head that you can't help you can't even, you don't even remember it now. It's just so drilled in your head, you just do it automatically. All right, well, let's look at something that's a little more, I don't know, computer science-like here. So let's go down another page. Uh, this is going to be example number two. All right, in my example number two, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a set of boxes here. So I'm going to give you this box is going to be three. This box is going to be 4. This box is going to be, eh, let's make this box 1. And let's make this box 2. Okay, so the goal is to sort these. And you want to sort them from least to greatest. So you want the end result to be 1, 2, 3, 4. All right, seems pretty easy. 
Uh, but when you think about how a computer might do it, or if you gave the job to a robot or whatever, you need to be very careful in the instructions you give it. Now a human being, you can just say, take the smallest and put it at the start. Take the, take the next smallest, put it at the, after the second one at the start, and so on. But a computer needs to do things a little more methodically. So usually a computer is gonna, they're gonna start here. They're gonna start at this first box, and then they're gonna need to do some action based on that, and then they might go to the next box, and the next box, and the next box. So what would a computer do if it were to do this? So in the first step, I might say the computer would uh, start at the leftmost box and go right one box at a time okay so that's my first rule there is I'm gonna start here and the box is gonna I'm gonna go to the right one box at a time but that doesn't really help me I'll just go to the end and then I'm done so I need another rule and then I need to give this uh, some sort of ability to switch boxes so that I can get the number one at the start so let's Let's just do this first. Let's start at the leftmost box and go right one box at a time. And then we'll say if the box to the right is smaller than swap. So what I'm going to say is Starting here, go right, and I'll keep going right, and if this box is smaller than this box, swap it. So let's start, let's actually do this, and let's see what happens here. So in the first case, I look at the first box, and I look at the next box, box to the right. It's not smaller, so I don't swap. Okay, so that means this guy is gonna move here, because now I go start the box, I'm moving one to the right, and then now that I'm here, it will say, well, I look at the next box to the right, and one is smaller than four, so that means I'm gonna switch these boxes. So this one's still three, but this one has become one now, and this one has become four. And this one is still two. Okay, but now I'm here. I go one more box to the right, and then I say again, is, is the box to the right smaller then go ahead and swap. So they are smaller, so I'm gonna swap again. So this doesn't change, I'm at three. This is one. This is four. Oh, <laughs> swapped. This is two, and this is four. Okay, so I've swapped those boxes, and now I'm here. The unfortunate thing is, is now there's no more boxes to the right. So I need to come up with yet another rule. So this rule should say, okay, if at rightmost box and still not sorted, then start over. Oops. Okay, so this is pretty much saying, all right, if I get here and that's not right, go ahead and start over. So we'll start over. So now I, I come back here and I'll rewrite this. Three, one, two, four, and I'm back at the beginning. So dots there. Now I look and I say, well, three and one, so I'm back, I'm back at my second step now, and this is smaller than three, so that means I go ahead and I swap it. This is two, and this is four, and my, I am now, whoops, I'm not there, I am here, above the three. So I can then, once again, do the next step. So I've got one, now this here is smaller than three, so this becomes two, this is three, and this is four, and now I'm here. 
and I look to the right and four is bigger than three, so I don't swap. So I move this here and then I look and I say, if at the rightmost and still not sorted, then start over. Well, I'm at the rightmost, but it is sorted. So now I am done and I can stop there. Okay, so this is a, you might be thinking it's like, wow, that's a really complicated way to do this. But in actuality, when you sort anything on your computer or you're doing a you're playing even playing a game or doing something your computer's doing stuff like this all the time it's sorting things out it's moving things around just little pieces of information numbers whatever okay so this is the type of thing your computer does and this is this is the english way of writing what your computer does and later we're going to take stuff like this and we're going to turn it into an actual program okay not not in this part of the series but much later on when we look at more deeply at algorithms, uh, we're going to actually take written English and we'll turn it into an actual program. And you can see right here, uh, if, you've, if you've taken um, any sort of programming stuff at all, you might have heard of an if-then statement. And we have if-then, if-then. And this is really common. It's just an if statement. It's saying, if something happened, do this. If something happened, do this. And if statements are an absolute important part of programming, like if statements and loops and everything. And we actually have a loop right here. It says start over. That's a loop. It brings us right back up here. So in this little example, there's a bunch of things that already deal with programming, if statements and loops. All right. So this is a, this is a great example. We're going to look at um, different places that you might find algorithms in the next video. And then in the third video for this, we're gonna go through a search example uh, that's kind of similar to maybe something you might have seen in a video game. Okay, so keep watching. I'll see you in the next video. If you have any questions, please leave them on the YouTube comment section or on my website, leftpeel.com. All right, uh, see you soon.